Well, hello, it's Wednesday, so it must be time for Woolly Hat Wednesday Wit. So first of all, I apologise for being with, not being with you last week. Um, I was very busy preparing for my classes and other things. And by the time I remembered it wasn't Wednesday, it was a bit late to post. So anyway, excuse, uh, apologies for that. And hopefully you'll enjoy this episode. So this last week, um, I had the first lot of my Learn to Crochet um, classes for this term. And so there are 12 people learning to crochet and we had a jolly good time. And just to those of you who've been on the class will possibly remember this. This is what I get them to do in the first week. So this is basically using a chain and a slip stitch. And I do this so that people get good practice in the basic holding of the hook and the holding of the yarn. Um, and um, yes, most most people manage to do this. It depends on how people have time to do their homework. Uh, but it's quite a nice little project to do as the beginning because it shows you can do things without learning or having to learn lots and lots of different stitches. So that's week one. So week two is tomorrow. We've got the second lot of classes. Um, so after they come back with their bags, uh, this is what we're going to do next. So we're going to look at double crochet. So double crochet, and this is working in rows, and double crochet and working in rows is, is more difficult, obviously, than chains and slip stitch. Um, so it's quite an art, and even those who are more experienced crochet, crocheters sometimes find it difficult to get a square or an oblong uh, or not because you need to, unlike knitting where you knit every stitch so you know where the end of the row is, with crochet you have to know where you're going into in the row below and if you don't get right to the end you end up with a triangle or pyramid and if you go too far, too many, then you end up with an upside down pyramid. Most people end up with a pyramid like that. So we should be practicing some of that and we should be doing that first of all with some chunky yarn because it's easy to see. Um, I also do it in stripe because it's also easy to see. Plain double crochet in one colour is quite difficult to see where you are. So hopefully the beginners will know where that is. So other things I've been doing, um, well, most of it has been preparing for class, um, but I have been doing uh, my woodland blanket. So this is the woodland blanket and this is one of my, oops, upside down, uh, one of my stash projects. There we go. I have had to buy one or two uh, extra things. So they are lovely trees and some bluebells and leaves and things like that. The next bit is some um, uh, granny squares with fungi on and the fox and other things that sunflower. So that, that's the next thing to do. So that'd be fun. Um, and then I, that you sew those on to the end and then you do some more rows. So um, this is uh, Coastal Crochet. I've done this, this design. So she has a site on the website and this was a, a cow or a crochet along. So she released the pattern every week so it's all there now because it was the last one that she did uh, last year so have a look at that if you fancy having a go it's a good way of learning new stitches and uh, she does provide quite a lot of detail including some videos and things so have a go at that if you want so uh, i'm also showing off this is one of my latest projects as well the sunflower or fields of gold by jamie crow which is now sitting on this my wicker sofa here in pride place and it is rather yummy i do like it um and she's another one too um explore if you want to fan fancy a challenge and she does quite detailed uh, patterns and things for you to have a look at there and that you can buy all the stuff in kit as well so you don't even have to choose your colours you can just buy it all ready made for you anyway so that's um that you might be interested to know that i'm this is um called a himalayan tea it was a pattern in inside crochet two or three years ago i think and this is crochet and it's all uh, i've used um some hand dyed four ply sock yarn from a lady called under the english sky and she's based in great Bort near chester although she's moving to blackpool i believe soon um and um she, she didn't have all the same colors so i did it sort of subtle stripes which is quite nice and it's a nice top for a day like today when it's not hot it's not cold but you want something a bit snuggly but not too hot that you're going to expire because we don't want to expire do we ladies and gents so i think that's me for this week uh, I will see you next week and show you what else I've been up to. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.